I just read Revelation today too, bro. The devil gonna get thrown. The devil gonna die so quick. Is it? That's confirmation. That's confirmation. That's all I'm gonna say. Rich in the cut. I'm in the cut. Oh, um, big arm, um, man. Like the video. Yeah, like it, um, man. We gonna react to these crazy TikTok dog. Let's get it. Dog. Nickelodeon documentary. Quiet on set. Correct. So that just validated more of what I just said. Who has seen that? Please. Who, who has seen that? Thank you. Thank you. When everybody was clowning me, oh yeah, he's like going. Then that comes out. And that validates just a little bit what I'm saying. It goes deeper than that. <coughs> Way deeper than that. That's just the iceberg. That's just the tip of the iceberg. What does that mean, SpongeBob is watching me? What does that mean? What did I tell you? What happened to Gervonta today? Did I not call him out for hanging out with P. Diddy? P. Diddy picked him up, held him in his arms. This is not a lie. I'm not trying to clown him. But then he kissed Adrian Broner or let Adrian Broner kiss him. These are not lies. Like what is going on with the world? And then he literally, I don't, I mean, I guess this is, I mean, this is kind of a little, I don't know how to feel about it, but he paints his nails. Maybe he wants to paint his nails. We'll give him that. Not the worst thing you could do. Not the best. <laughs> hey, I'll ask you this question. If I painted my nails and let P. Diddy pick me up, what would they say about me? I'm beyond this, you know. It is what it is, he said what he said, bro. And I'm just going to keep it all the way 100. It is what it is, he said what he said. It's the truth. Like, if Ryan did it, bro, they'd be calling. He losing his mind. He did this and that. And I respect him. I think he's a great fighter. Um... But if he did it, it'd be a different story. You know, that's just 100, but y'all gotta watch what these people be making y'all do once you go up in fame, though. I'm just saying. YouTuber shares Illuminati story. The point of the story is she really wanted to be famous, I guess. That's, mm -hmm. that's a, yeah, that's what Don't she wanted all. to be. And she met somebody um, who could promise her that. And she met somebody. Have you ever heard this? No. She met somebody. This is crazy. And he was like, I know how to make you famous. And she's like, how? And he's like, we can turn you into anything. Like, Scientology. We can turn you, honestly. It, it may have been may something have been. like that. We can turn you into a singer, an actor, whatever you want. And one day he visited her, her apartment and he was like in a suit and tie. And I came in and I saw him in the suit. And then she's like, please leave. And she, and she closed the door on me, so I left. And she came up to my apartment sobbing. And she was like, this guy, please, you cannot repeat this. And for, for three years, I held the story to myself because I thought this guy was going to me. But they were like, if you ever repeat this, they'll kill me and they'll you and they'll anybody that you love. And she was sobbing to me. And she's like, this guy, he came to me. And he's like, he's telling me. She, she was like, this guy came to me. And he's like, I can turn you into anything you want to be, but you have to sacrifice somebody. And I just spoke to my mother and my mom. My mom really supports me. And she's like willing to be sacrificed so I can become like famous. a singer or whatever, famous, whatever. And it was just completely serious, and it was really f terrifying. Really, really terrifying. Like you believed her. Totally believed yeah. her. That is deep, bro. The Keeper 100, that's how it is out here. You can believe it if you want, but that's how it is out here. Same thing with record labels. Same thing with these music artists. They sacrifice people. Why do you think when people go big, somebody in their family die, bro? That story is 100% real, bro. And Jesus said all sorcerers, all people that, that commit dark, commit darkness like that, I think of stuff like that is witchcraft and all that correlates. Sorcerers will be thrown in the lake of fire, bro. You dig what I'm saying? What happens in the dark will come to the light. And that's all I'm going to say about that. That's 100% true. Record labels, everybody doing it. If you're selling these record labels, you signing these deals, you're selling your soul. Period. Five signs that God is indeed talking to you. Number one, unexplainable peace. Facts. In the midst of turmoil, when a wave of unexplainable peace washes over you, know that I am God, whispers the Bible. 
Philippians 4, 7 talks about the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. It's that profound serenity that engulfs you, even when circumstances suggest you should be anything but calm. This peace is God's way of speaking into your chaos, saying, I am with you. Number two, recurring themes in scripture. Have you ever noticed a certain verse or a biblical theme popping up in your life repeatedly? Whether it's through sermons, your personal reading, or even a friend's casual mention, this could be God highlighting a path or a lesson he wants you to absorb. Jeremiah 33.3 invites us to call out to God, promising that he will answer and reveal great and unsearchable things we do not know. Number three, providential opportunities. Sometimes God opens doors that we never even noticed were there. These opportunities often come when we least expect them, but perfectly align with our prayers or God-given dreams. Colossians 4.3 speaks of praying for open doors for the word to be proclaimed. When an opportunity seems like it's been tailor-made for you, consider that it might be God beckoning you towards your divine purpose. Number four, conviction leading to repentance. When God speaks, his words can convict us deeply, stirring a desire for repentance and transformation. This isn't about feeling condemned, but about feeling called to grow and change. Mm. Hebrews 12.11 explains how discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. This divine nudge to leave behind what's harmful and embrace a holier path is God's voice or gingus to come closer to him. Number five through other people. God often uses the people around us to deliver messages we need to hear. It might be advice, encouragement, or even correction. Proverbs 15:31 tells us that the ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. If you find wisdom in someone's words that resonates deeply and nudges you towards positive change, consider that God might be speaking to you through them. Learning to listen for these divine whispers is a journey of faith, a testament to the intimate relationship God desires to have with each of us. Remember, he is always speaking. We just need to tune our hearts to listen. Drop an amen if you agree with me. Bro, and pass God. this to someone who needs it. God bless. Man, that was beautiful, bro. Like. It's, it's okay. We can sap down real quick. Like, that was beautiful, bro. Like, I, I feel an internal peace. That's the Holy Spirit in me, bro. That's feeling like the presence of God right now. I don't know. That really just did something to me, bro. Like, and um, I pray that y'all let that see your good fruit, bro. Like, and take heed to what y'all just saw. Bro, y'all don't watch me from day one. I don't want to go into no tangent, but y'all don't watch me from day one, bro. Like, turn into this man of God, bro. Like, this y'all real, dog. Like, I ain't got nothing to... I, they don't... They pay me less to get on here and tell the truth. I don't make nowhere near as much as I used to make getting on here shoving guns in y'all face. I get paid a tremendous amount less to get on here and, t and tell the truth. They, they don't pay me to get on here and tell the truth. My money comes from my old videos. They don't get on. Me, they don't pay me to get on here and talk about Jesus, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I've sacrificed that to give y'all the truth, bro. This is real, bro. And I pray that video really touched y'all, gang. Real talk, bro. Jesus is real, bro. They put in contracts out here. You can't say Jesus. I'm going to say... I ain't signing no contract. So I'm going to say Jesus. I'm not signing no contract. I'm going to say Jesus to the day I go. Period. You dig what I'm saying? Jesus is real, bro. Like, that, that video touched me, bro. Real talk. I put some more in here, too, though. Why should you never speak evil words again? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, proclaims Proverbs 18.21. Picture your words as seeds sown into the garden of the world. Would you plant thorns of harm or blossoms of blessing? The Bible doesn't merely suggest but commands us to cultivate kindness, understanding that words have the power to build dreams or shatter spirits. 
James 3, 5 to 6, warns us, likening the tongue to a small spark that can set a great forest on fire. This vivid imagery serves as a reminder. Our words, though seemingly insignificant, hold immense power. They can ignite conflict or illuminate hearts with hope and love. But why should we make such a radical change to never again speak evil words? Ephesians 4.29 offers clarity. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Our calling is not to tear down, but to build up, to speak life into every soul we encounter. This transformation begins within, rooted in love and empathy. When we view others through the lens of compassion, understanding their struggles and triumphs, our words naturally become channels of God's grace and kindness. Matthew 12, 36 reminds us, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. This sobering thought is not meant to induce fear, but to inspire a conscious, deliberate choice to speak words that heal, not wound. Our speech becomes a reflection of our heart, a testament to our faith and love for both God and His creation. Let this be your guiding light. To speak is to create. With every word uttered, you have the power to shape reality, to spread love and light in a world thirsting for kindness. Today, let us pledge to never again speak evil words, not out of obligation, but out of a deep, abiding love for God and for one another. Drop an amen if you agree with me. And pass this to someone who needs it. God bless. For the rest of life, bro, us over here, we speaking now, but nothing but great things over ourselves. Life and life and death is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it, uh, don't sorry, it, uh, I forgot the rest, but life and death is in the power of the tongue, bro. So all over here, bro, for the rest of time, let's remember over here, bro, all my people that that's locked in on the channel, bro, remember, speak positive things. Like if you want some, I got that already. I'm going to get that. De declare and decree. Do it the biblical way. Do it the Lord way. Do it God's way. Don't go out here manifesting 369 methods and all that weird, John. That's not godly, bro. Declare and decree in the name of Jesus. You got that. I did that with a job and it worked, bro, when I was working. Every, uh, these new age and all these 369 methods, these um these little books they be coming out with, all that junk cap, bro, is all come from God, bro. They be trying to make little watered down versions of what God already said. Y'all ain't doing nothing but getting it from the Bible and making y'all own little stuff to it and putting these books out. Think rich, grow rich, all that. That's BS, bro. Put your faith in God, declare and decree in the name of Jesus, bro, and that's what it is. All the rest of this junk is just deception, bro. That's facts. And I said what I said. That's it's real, bro. Like, it's real, bro. It's kind of short. Wait, uh, supposed to come up on Tom Sawyer's Island in Frontierland, which in 1956, Walt Disney was said to have given it to the state of Missouri, and the governor of Missouri was supposed to have annexed it. However, the state of Missouri doesn't confirm that. So it's not, I'm not sure if we're coming up in California still. It's getting kind of dark, so I'm going to throw my glow stick ahead of me to make sure there's no sudden drops or anything. Okay.
Did I make it? Did I make it? I am in it. Just be I ain't get that. I ain't gonna lie. So they got a tunnel that leads to Disneyland. We all know Walt Disney doing jump with these kids, bro. Just like the rest of everybody else doing jump with these kids. Disney Demonic, Nickelodeon Demonic, all this junk Demonic, bro. I just, in that video, I didn't hear nothing but the, the TikTok music and the creepy music. I, I didn't, it was, I heard more music and other junk than actually hearing the person. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? That's not weird. Solomon warned us. Solomon. Never trust a woman who does this. Solomon. What King Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived according to the Bible, said about trust. Solomon shared countless proverbs on life, love, and faith. But when it comes to relationships, his advice was layered, filled with calls for understanding and discernment. One of his warnings, often misinterpreted, is about not blindly trusting actions that might lead us astray, especially in Proverbs 5, 3, 4, where he talks about the smooth words of a stranger leading to bitter consequences. This isn't just about mistrust in women, or any person for that matter. It's a broader call to seek wisdom in who we trust and how we build our relationships. Mm. Solomon's warnings are about looking beyond the surface, recognizing that true character and integrity are what count. It's about understanding intentions, aligning values, and ensuring that our relationships lead us closer to God, not away. True wisdom, as Solomon teaches us, comes from discerning the heart, actions, and consequences of our associations. It's not about gender. It's about the spirit and truth behind the actions. In Ephesians 5, 15 to 16, Paul echoes this, urging us to walk wisely and make the most of our time because the days are evil. This means choosing relationships that uplift, not those that entangle us in sin or lead us away from our faith. Mm -hmm. So, what's the real message? It's to seek wisdom in all our relationships, to ask God for discernment, to love, but love wisely, to trust, but trust with eyes open to the truth. Solomon's advice isn't about fear, it's about freedom, the freedom to choose relationships that bring us closer to who we are meant to be in Christ. Drop an amen if you agree with me. You may want to save this video for later and pass this to someone who needs it. God bless. Bro, I love the I love the Christian TikToks, bro. Like that's that's real facts, y'all. Like we that wisdom, bro, that proverbs, y'all gotta get in that proverbs, bro. So godly relationships. That's friends, family. Your significant other, all it goes always, bro. This is fucking spooky. Have you heard of the Kobe Bryant conspiracy theory? Okay, you're gonna add all four of these numbers and then tell me what you get. If you did the math right, you would have gotten 8,024. Kobe's jersey numbers were 8 and 24. And if you take these numbers and add each number individually, you're gonna come up with the number 41. Kobe Brown was 41 years old at the moment of his death. This is so fucking crazy. So they died on January 26. Now, if you add those numbers individually, you get the number nine. And there were nine people that died in the helicopter crash. Now That's this crazy. last part had me spooked. So the helicopter departed at 9.06 in the morning. And at 9.47, they reported the crash. If you take 947 minus 906, you get 41. The helicopter crashed within 41 minutes of departing. Kobe Brown was 41 years old at the time of death. Was there a conspiracy behind Kobe Brown's death? Was it a ritual from the Illuminati? There's all these crazy theories out there. All this math and numerology is giving me a fucking headache. Click the plus sign and let me know what you think. I ain't gonna lie, that's tough, bro. That's crazy. That's why you don't get in that BS, bro. 
all them Illuminati, all the Masons, all that junk, the money. I'm just going to call it what it is. It ain't Christ. You're going to hurt yourself and do yourself a disservice at the end. Kobe didn't have to die like that. Kobe didn't have to die that early. It's him joining what he joined, bro. You dig? And he was in it, for sure. Like, and this ain't just down on him or nothing. It just, it's the, it is what it is, the truth, bro. But don't join under that. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, bro. The Father, bro, you straight. <laughs> you gonna hurt yourself doing any other this BS out here, dog. You gonna hurt yourself, dog. Like, he didn't have to go through that. Like, y'all gonna, y'all gonna see what I'm saying, though. Like, Actress talks about Hollywood's gold juice. Drink the Kool -Aid. You don't drink the gold juice. So I was offered the gold juice three times in my 20s, my 30s, and What's my 40s. Pee? A lot of golden showers. In the Burbank. gold juice that I will live forever and I'll have whatever I want. That's crazy. The gold juice. You never offered the gold juice? No. I'm, it's, I'm a scumbag comic. What's the gold juice? I don't know. I don't know, but I didn't drink it and I didn't want it. And is this in I a. I noticed when all the girls, with certain girls on orange, um, changed. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's like a real thing. Like, it's all a real thing. And it's scary because they send, like, people after you and they can, like, kind of moonlight as, like, a friend or, you know, and, and they're wolf in sheep's clothing. And, and, and listen, you can have everything you want, all the fame in the world, all the money. I'm like, hmm. What if I just drank it, but then I, you know what I mean? Like, what if I, and I don't know what it is. It's, if it's a metaphor for the gold juice, like, you feel what I'm, what I'm, what I'm. Dang, wow, that's tough, bro. I don't even want to know what else they got them folks doing. But there's, that's more proof that this junk is real and that you need to stay away from it. Call this junk a conspiracy all the time if you want to. This junk be real out here. They really got these. These are really some sick folks behind all this weird jump. It's the devil. The devil behind this jump, bro. You dig what I'm saying? Come to God, bro. Like, that's our only security. Like, if the devil going so hard, he has to be going so hard for a reason because he knows there's a God that he has to answer to. I just read Revelation today, too, bro. The devil going to get thrown. The devil going to die so quick. It, it, that's confirmation. That's confirmation. That's all I'm going to say. They're teaching kids how to sell their soul in cartoons. In the episode, The Devil and Little D, Sammy gets offered a record deal by these two weird-looking guys but turns it down. They then go up to Little D and offer it to him, to which he agrees and signs it without reading the terms. Little D, unknowingly, just sold his soul to the devil who takes the form of a record producer by the name of Big D. At first, Little D is eager for his big break, but soon finds that something is off about his deal. They begin to change him and even try to make him wear a dress. This episode parallelism theories of celebrities selling their souls in order to make it in the industry. They make him dye his hair blonde and wear a dress which are rituals performed in Hollywood. Fortunately, at the end, his contract is void and Lil D gets his soul back and is freed from the label. That's tough. Putin let them folks Putin let them folks have it, didn't it? But with that other selling soul John, I be telling y'all this, I be really want to get y'all to understand so y'all can watch out for this John, bro. This John be this John be as long as you got God and you living for the Lord, that Holy Spirit, the Lord said you can't snatch you can't snatch the Lord's elect it out of his hand, bro. The father won't let nobody snatch the Lord's elect it out of his hand. Facts. But this stuff is I just really want y'all to know, bro. This junk is real, bro. And as long as you, you know, in the Lord Jesus, you straight, gang. I done you know what I'm saying? Like, I done I done 
I've been knowing about this is a jit, bro. About the selling soul junk. I've been knowing about all this junk. It's just a jit. Like, it's real, bro. The new open eye robot is scary. I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate. Optimus robot, at least from what I'm seeing, but either way, I have a feeling we'll be seeing humanoid robots being used for a variety of tasks a lot sooner than we thought. Bro, they trying to they trying so hard to take this word away from God, bro. They trying to put chips in people's head, chips in people's hands, make robots. Bro, I don't think that's gonna prosper. People gonna notice you gotta be freaking delusional. Think you talking to you looking at machinery trying to treat it like a human, bro. You gotta be stupid and delusional. You gotta be, you got you you gotta be nuts, bro. Thinking that that's normal. Whoever fall for that, bro, you you deserve to go. Where you going at that point? You can't tell me that that's normal. You're not made in the image of God once you once you conform to AI. I'm just letting you know that once you bite all this AI junk and get the mark of the beast and the chip and start putting chips in your head and your hand. And, and conforming with robots, you you deserve to go to hell, bro. Cause that's not that's not it. You're no longer made in the image of God. Buzz Aldrin saw the devil himself in Antarctica. You may asking, WTF? So this is the theory. In 2016, a satellite captured an image of what scientists believe to be a massive pyramid in Antarctica. This would be the largest pyramid ever found on Earth. Bigger than the Great Pyramid of Giza, which is about 230 meters wide. And this pyramid in Antarctica would be 2,000 meters wide. So in 2016, Buzz Aldrin, alongside his team, embarked on an expedition to Antarctica with the aim of exploring and confirming the existence of this immense pyramid. So this where he gets wild, during the expedition, Buzz Aldrin had a heart attack. He was hospitalized for days, but when he fully recovered and left the hospital, he tweeted something strange, but quickly deleted it. It said, we are all in danger. It is evil itself. And someone close to Buzz said they spoke with him. And he said one thing, we thought out things we shouldn't implement. If you want to dive deeper and know the secrets of this world, join my telegram group with the link in bio. This scientist said they had discovered the Garden of Eden and that they couldn't believe their eyes when they saw what was in there. Check this out. Dude, this is awesome, guys. I've never seen it this clear. Yeah, it was super murky. Dude, look how deep that is. It's like 20 feet deep, but it looks so shallow. It's the power bowl. That is wild. That is crazy. Oh, wow. Look how crazy. 
twist the way it is. Go to the link in bio for the full. That's crazy, bro. I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's the real Garden of Eden they was in, but that water was crystal clear, though. But, man, that wraps it up for the video, man. Y'all like and let me know what y'all think, man. If you ain't already, bro, repent, bro. Just come closer to God, the Lord Jesus, bro. Y'all know y'all can trust me. I'm not going to steer you wrong, bro. I done been new age. I done been living for the world. I done been around, bro. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Never sold my soul. Never worship the devil. Let's get that. Let's get that all the way behind it, bro. Always had a heart for God, bro. Just going through bumps in the road. And I figured out that the Lord Jesus Christ is the way, truth, and the life. Like the video, comment. We out of here. Um. Uh.